very small tsunamis under one meter. At the lowest end of the scale, we have tsunamis less than one meter high. These aren't the kind of waves that sweep across cities or flood entire coasts. Instead, they often look like slightly unusual ripples or rapid changes in the tide. They might come and go without most people even noticing. However, to scientists and oceanographers, even these tiny tsunamis are valuable. They serve as signals that something happened underwater, maybe a minor earthquake, a small landslide, or a volcanic tremor. In places like Japan and the Pacific Islands, highly sensitive buoys are positioned out at sea to detect these small waves. Even if they pose no threat to life, they can act as an early warning system for bigger events that might follow. Harbors, however, are a different story. Even a half-meter surge can break mooring lines, toss small boats around, or cause unusual currents that threaten swimmers and divers. So while they're at the bottom of the scale, there's still a reminder that the ocean is never completely calm. Moderate tsunamis, one to three meters. Once a tsunami grows into the one to three meter range, things change quickly. A single meter of moving water doesn't sound like much, but when it's rushing in as a wall across the coastline, it becomes incredibly dangerous. These waves can sweep people off their feet, knock over cars, and flood homes near the beach. For perspective, the average adult can be carried away in water just 50 centimeters deep if the current is strong enough. At one to three meters, we're already looking at deadly conditions. These kinds of tsunamis are usually triggered by earthquakes in the mid six to low seven magnitude range on the Richter scale. Coastal authorities take them seriously, often sounding evacuation alarms because it only takes a few minutes of hesitation for people to be caught. Fishing communities are particularly at risk because their boats and gear are right at the shoreline. While these waves don't usually cause citywide destruction, they can ruin harbors, sink dozens of vessels, and displace families living along the coast. Significant tsunamis, three to five meters. Tsunamis between three and five meters tall move into a whole new category of destruction. A five meter wave is about the height of a two-story building, and when it strikes land, it's not just water, it's a torrent filled with debris, wood, metal, cars, and even pieces of buildings. These waves can smash through seawalls, tear apart docks, and flood roads, making rescue operations almost impossible. Coastal towns, especially those built without reinforced infrastructure, can be heavily damaged or even partially wiped out. Historically, tsunamis in this range have claimed thousands of lives, particularly in regions where warning systems are limited. Survivors often describe them as unstoppable walls of water that arrive faster than anyone expects. Even when people manage to escape, returning to their homes often reveals nothing but wreckage. Economically, the cost of recovery can take years, with fishing industries, tourism, and local businesses completely shattered. Major tsunamis, five to 10 meters. Catastrophic devastation occurs when tsunami waves reach heights of five to 10 meters as they make their way inland. Envision a row of houses or an apartment complex that is completely submerged by water that is barreling inland at the speed of a freeway. This is the point at which entire neighborhoods begin to disappear from the map. Roads, electrical lines, and bridges are among the types of infrastructure that are completely destroyed while residences are leveled and crops are inundated. These tsunamis are typically the result of major earthquakes, typically those with a magnitude greater than eight. The ocean is said to have made a horrifying scream by survivors as it rose and crashed inland, dragging trees, automobiles, and even ships with it. The number of fatalities caused by a tsunami of this magnitude can reach tens of thousands, depending on the density of the population in the area that is affected by the waves. These waves not only cause immediate destruction, but they also result in the contamination of drinking water, outbreaks of disease, and long-term economic collapse. For governments, a tsunami of five to 10 meters is not simply a natural calamity. It is also a humanitarian emergency. Giant tsunamis, 10 to 30 meters. We are now entering the stage of tsunamis, which will leave an indelible mark on the history of humanity. The enormous size of giant tsunamis, which measure between 10 and 30 meters in height, is nearly incomprehensible in terms of their power. The most well-known example of this 
is the 2004 Indian Ocean tsunami. It caused waves up to 30 meters in height, slamming onto coasts in 14 different nations. These waves were triggered by a magnitude 9.1 earthquake off the coast of Sumatra. With almost 230,000 fatalities, it is among the most destructive natural disasters that have ever been documented. Structures made of concrete are dismantled like toys, forests are leveled to the ground, and enormous ships are flung on shore at this scale. Those who survived describe witnessing entire towns disappear in mere seconds, leaving little behind but dirt and wreckage. These tsunamis do not strike just a single time. They frequently occur in many waves, with each successive surge being more catastrophic than the previous one. The shorelines remain indistinguishable for days thereafter, and the emotional anguish endured by the victims persists for generations after the incident. Mega tsunamis, 30 to 100 meters. Although they are not common, mega tsunamis are incredibly frightening. Mega tsunamis typically originate from catastrophic landslides, volcanic eruptions, or impacts from meteors, all of which displace an enormous amount of water in a matter of seconds. This is in contrast to the majority of tsunamis, which are triggered by seismic activity. The incident that occurred in Lituya Bay, Alaska in 1958 is the most well-known example of this phenomenon. A colossal rock slide was responsible for the creation of a wave that reached a staggering height of 524 meters at its highest point, stripping mountainsides of whole forests as it swept over them. It was fortunate that the event took place in a remote fjord as a result of which only a few people lost their lives. However, it also demonstrated the might of nature. A tsunami of 30 to 100 meters would be absolutely devastating in areas that are more densely populated. It would annihilate entire coastal cities, flood interior areas for kilometers, and forever change the shape of coasts. Scientists are concerned about volcanic islands, such as La Palma and the Canary Islands, where a catastrophic collapse could result in waves that fall within this range. Reminding us that despite their rarity, mega tsunamis demonstrate that the Earth possesses the capacity to do destruction on a scale that is difficult for us to comprehend. Apocalyptic tsunamis, over 100 meters. At the highest pinnacle of the scale are cataclysmic tsunamis, waves that are more than 100 meters in height. These are not simply regional calamities, they are events that have the power to change the entire globe. It is the belief of scientists that throughout the history of the Earth, waves of this magnitude have been caused by asteroid strikes. Some of these waves have been taller than buildings, racing over the oceans and changing coastlines across entire continents. In the event that an asteroid were to impact the ocean today, the resulting tsunami might wreak havoc on numerous countries at once, claim the lives of millions of people, and bring about the collapse of world trade. These waves have the ability to permanently alter the geography of coastlines, in addition to affecting human populations. Scientists examine old geological records in search of evidence of these massive waves, and some researchers caution that our contemporary society is still susceptible to such a catastrophe. Apocalyptic tsunamis, which are extraordinarily uncommon, demonstrate the absolute limits of natural strength.